Hello everybody, my name is Mike Guy, and in this video we are going to look at creating our own sprite sheets with Allegro 5. So, in the previous video what we looked at doing was loading several different image files into Allegro and then showing them one after the other so that we got animation. We effectively tricked the eye into thinking it was seeing you know, motion of our image, right? So it was seeing some animation of our object. Now, what we did is, like I said, we, we loaded several images into memory. And that can get kind of cumbersome because we think, you know, I just loaded in, uh, I believe it was eight different images for flying animation for one sprite. So eight images, one sprite, flying animation. Now imagine we have a game where we've got 10 to 20 different types of sprites or 10 to 20 different images and they each can do multiple animations that come with it multiple uh, multiple frames, right? So you can see now we're dealing with the order of magnitude of 100 to 200 uh, images. You know, we have to keep track of it, we have to load that all in memory and keep track of it. And it can be, it can be a bit cumbersome. In comes what we call sprite sheets. Now a sprite sheet is effectively one big sheet that has all of our images laid out. Um, and I have an example here I can go ahead and show you. Um, for instance, we have, this is one of the images we used in our previous video. So this is one frame of animation and I have eight of these files, right, for just flying animation in this direction. I actually have eight for the, the opposite direction, eight up, eight down, eight northwest, eight northeast, so on and so forth. I have some uh, walking animations, some fire animations, you know. Um, so, so a whole bunch of different images, right? What we can do is we can call or pull animation frames from a single uh, from a single bitmap and only draw a portion of that. And we're not going to look at doing that in this video, but I'm going to show you how to set up for that. Um, and the, a sprite sheet effectively looks like this. I'm going to bring it over here, where we have one bitmap with all of our frames of animation at a set distance uh, on it. All right, so all of our frames of animation on a single sheet. Now this is only a strip. Really, you would have row after row after row after row of different animations in here, and we'd use programming uh, framework to control that, uh, what was being drawn, but you get the idea. Now, to create uh, a, a sheet like this, a sprite sheet, you could, like say, open Photoshop or GIMP or something like that, and, and, and carefully lay out each image, you know, uh, open them all up and, and manually create your sprite sheets. You can absolutely do that. No, nothing wrong with that. Um, but I'm sitting here thinking, we have this powerful uh, Allegro game library at our, at our disposal, and we can do things like creating bitmaps, and we can save bitmaps, so why not, uh, why not let our program do it for us? Why not, why not just write some code that we can save, and all we have to do is pop in a couple of values, and, and boom, create our sprite sheets um, whenever we need to make a new sprite sheet. And I thought, you know what, that sounds like a, a pretty darn good idea to me, so I'm going to go ahead and close these. Well, we're gonna we're gonna look at doing that. We're gonna look at using Allegro to programmatically create our sprite sheets, so they won't have to like mess around with Photoshop or anything like that. What I always like to say is, you know, work work smarter, not harder. So, uh, so let's look at what we have here code-wise. Got a little bit of code here up on the screen, and what I am looking at is very very basic code. I have my image.h. Uh, I actually have a bool done variable which I don't need. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Um, I have width and height, image width and image height, um, creating my display, um, and then initialize my image add-on, and then destroying everything and, and exiting. No game loop, no inputs, nothing like that. I'm, I'm purely using this to do work. When I, this isn't something I want to keep running or anything like that. Um, so yeah, very, very skeletal. Uh, actually very similar to our first program ever in that it doesn't do anything just yet. But we're going to look at adding some of that functionality. So the first thing I want to do is I want to determine how many images uh, are going to be in my, this particular frame set or, or this particular sprite sheet. And so I'm going to do my fly animation. So I'm going to do constant int array size equals eight. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and declare some Allegro variables here. I'm going to do Allegro bitmap. It's going to be an array of bitmaps. I'm just going to call image and pass an array size. And then I'm going to do another one here. I'm going to do Allegro bitmap. 
and I'm going to call this out image. This is going to be out image is going to be my sprite sheet when I'm all when it's all said and done. All right, great. So now I'm going to come over here to where I am initializing my add-on, or when I finished initializing my image add-on, and I'm just going to start filling this array up. So I'm going to do image sub zero equals al load bitmap fly gt w one two three four dot bmp. Oh, I forgot quotes. And Okay, so that's our first image. I'm actually just going to copy, paste this. Oh, that's not good. That's not what I'm going to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. I'm just going to fix my numbers here. And fix it. Okay, so I load all of my bitmaps into memory here. And I'm going to create my image width and my image height. Now I'm trying to write this code as generically as possible um, so that you could reuse it for your own bitmaps to create your own sprite sheets, which is why you know I could I could look up just in the file system what the, the width and the height of these are, but I'm, I'm putting these function calls in here so that you can load up whatever images, it doesn't matter, and the code will just know it automatically. Height equals AL get bitmap height. And I will pass in image zero. Great. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do here. Um, so far, very generic. If you wanted to do your own that wasn't this, you would just specify how many frames of animation there were and you would load in those bitmaps into an array. And then what we're going to do is this. We're essentially going to, and if you, if, while I explain this, it help, might help to imagine it in your head. We're going to start the zero, zero position of this, uh, this out bitmap, uh, this out image, our, our, our sprite sheet. And we are going to basically print our first image. And then we are going to move to now image width, right? and then zero as our coordinates. So it's still at the top of the sprite sheet, but we're gonna move a full image width to the right, and then we're gonna print our second. And then we're gonna move two image widths to the right from zero, zero. So now, say, let's say our pretender image is 50 pixels. Our first image will be at zero, zero. Our second image will be at 50, zero. Our third image will be at 100, zero, so on and so forth. And we're gonna go ahead and just basically stamp these images, one right after the other, into a bitmap. All right, uh, and so what I need to do is I'm going to need to create my my out image bitmap of the correct size. I need it to be big enough so that I can put all these on here. So I'm going to type in out image equals al create bitmap, and then I'm going to pass in for my width. It's going to be image width. Okay. Now this assumes every frame is the same width. If it's a different width, you're going to have to do some manual adjustments here. But uh, I'm assuming every frame is the same width, and in, in this case, they are. So it's going to be image width times array size. So that's just if I have eight images and they're each 50 pixels, it's going to be eight times 50 for a total of 400 pixels. All right, and then image height or for my height, it's just going to be I'm doing only a, sh uh, a sheet or a, a strip, if you will. Um, so I will not need you know, multiple layers. So I'm just going to do image height here. All right, great. Now, so far in Allegro, what we've been doing is we've been drawing to our display. And it's just set up to do that automatically. And our display actually has a bitmap in it. Our bitmap, uh, or our display has a bitmap. It, it can be considered to be, quote unquote, is a bitmap with that back buffer. You know, uh, we're drawing to that and then it's presented on the screen. So what we need to do is we need to tell Allegro, hey, for a second, I don't want to draw to my display. I want to draw to something else. Okay, and the command to do that is al set target bitmap. We're saying, hey, for the next few calls, we're going to print to something else. And that something else in this case is going to be out image. And the cool thing about doing this, 
um, is that until I call this AL set target again, every call that I make, every draw call, just automatically draws to this out image, right? We're just treating it as if it was a screen. So, um, you know, I don't have to worry about each individual uh, function call. I don't have to worry about, hey, where is that printing? Which, which, which bit map is it printing to? You know, I don't have to worry about keeping track of my images and stuff like that. It's just while this is active, everything gets printed there. All right. So since we, since we just created this raw bitmap, uh, this out image, uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear it to a color uh, so that we, uh, you know, we, we know that it's all effectively quote unquote zeroed out. So we'll do AL clear, oops, AL clear to color, AL map RGB zero zero zero. Great. Oh. Okay, great. So now we know our background image is fully black. You know everything's cleared out. Everything's good to go. And now we can go ahead and start drawing to it. So I'm going to do a loop here. I'm going to do four int i equals zero. I is less than array size i plus plus. Now I could do this manually. I could just manually print each image. But like I said, I'm trying to make this generic enough so that you can get your own animation, you know, set and just make a few minor tweaks to this code and it'll work for you. So I use a loop so that we can just you know, change array size, change a few of our images, make it still, basically, if we just change our array size right here, and we change the images we're loading here, everything still works. We don't have to make any other changes. So it's actually really neat like that, how it still just, just works. So inside here, I'm gonna do L, draw, bitmap, what bitmap am I drawing? I'm drawing image, sub i, and where am I drawing it? Well, like I said, we will be drawing it one right after the other from left to right. So if my image is uh, 50 pixels wide, I want to draw it at zero, and then 50, and then 100, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to do i times image width. So the image width is 50. The first time this iterates, it'll be zero, because i equals zero. The second time, it'll be 50. The next time, it'll be 100, so on and so forth. And then we also want to draw it at zero, meaning uh, that's our, our y value. We want to draw it at the top of our image. And then no, no bitmap flags. Great. All right. So that effectively creates our sprite sheet. All well and good. Everything's created right there. The next thing we have to do is we have to save this sprite sheet back to a file. So we actually have a file for this sprite sheet. Because like I said, I want to be able to run this program once and then have a sprite sheet. Um, and so I have this code here. I have my bitmap, my out image that has my sprite sheet in it. Now I'm going to go ahead and save that. And the function is al save bitmap. Uh, real, real difficult right there. And I'm just going to specify where, what I'm going to call it. And I'm going to call it sprite sheet. And in this case, I already opened up a file called sprite sheet. Um, and so now I'm going to type sprite sheet demo. Uh, just to show you guys that I wasn't cheating and that I didn't have it already pre-created BMP and then it's going to ask me what image I'm outputting out the out image. Great. And then the last thing I want to do, you don't necessarily have to do this because the program is about to close, but I do it anyway because it's just a great idea to get into this habit, is if you change your target bitmap, when you're done, change it back. Uh, like I said, the program is about to close, so I don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to do AL set target. Oh, that's not right. AL set target bitmap. And if you did not believe me when I told you the display effectively has a bitmap inside of it that you're drawing to, check this out. Do an AL set target bitmap, and then the next time I'm going to call AL get back buffer and pass in display, thus proving that the display has a back buffer, which is a bitmap. So so there you go. If you doubted me, there you go. We've been using uh, bitmaps in our display all along. And then finally, I want to go ahead and delete uh, or destroy the bitmaps that we loaded into memory so that we uh, we don't have the memory leaks. So I'm going to just do 4 int i equals 0, i is less than array size plus L destroy bitmap image sub i and L destroy 
bitmap out image. Great. All right. Now let me pull up my Allegro example folder. Bring this on the screen here. And you can see I have all my fly GTs here. And you'll notice I actually go to eight, but zero and eight are the same image. So I'm just keeping it out. Um, and you will notice we do not have a sprite sheet demo.bmp. It does not exist. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and run this. And it basically flashes, opens, closes, right? Because we're not, we're not, we don't have any loops, we don't have any rest statements, you know, nothing there. Now I'm going to bring my folder back over and look at this sprite sheet demo. And there we go. We have our sprite sheet. We are ready to start animation with only a single image as opposed to a whole slew of images uh, that we otherwise would have. Great. So before I end this video, I just want to talk about real quick where you can go with this. We saw that we had basically a single sprite strip, one animation per sheet. And you can keep doing that that way, you know, over and over and over again, and just combining your, your strips to create a sheet. Or you could add, uh, make it a multi-dimensional array. Um, you could add a number of columns and a number of rows, um, you know, and, and use that to make yourself these multi-tiered sheets. Um, so the sky is really the limit with what you can do with this code as far as making your sprite sheets dynamically. Uh, just popping in a few variables, changing a few file names, you know, running it once and then boom, having your sprite sheet uh, without having to, to spend the time lining everything up inside, say, a Photoshop program. Because basically if you line it up incorrectly inside Photoshop, you might have gaps and your animations can jump and you don't want that. You want everything to be lined up pixel perfect. Um, and so that's what we achieved here. And you saw that with that sprite sheet, you know, we can then just begin, uh, begin programming. One last time, I'm going to pull my sprite sheet demo back up here. Um, just to point one other item out when I was talking about Pixel Perfect here. You'll remember that we cleared the background to black, which means if there was any gaps, I would see black, you know, because the background is black. Since I see absolutely no black on here, I know that this is perfect, that it's lined up perfectly. So uh, I can be very happy with this sprite sheet. Okay, great. So in the next video, we are going to look at using our sprite sheet. Uh, to do animation. So we're basically, it's going to be the same as like the last video, only we're going to use a single, uh, single bitmap instead of an array of bitmaps.